Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Game Music Podcast. I'm your host, Jake Butno, and with me today is Ryan Roth. How are you doing, Ryan? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know who you are, uh, why don't you talk a bit about yourself and some of the games you've worked on? A little bit about myself. I have uh, i don't know. I've been interested in doing game stuff for uh, you know probably since high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started working with a friend of mine, on uh, on RPG Maker games, okay, and so we yeah you would, we would make RPG Maker games, and uh, you know usually I was responsible for all the audio mm-hmm. components of it. Which uh, which version of RPG Maker like which era was this? This was RM two K. This was like oh, okay. know, RPG Maker two thousand. Oh, okay, not the best one, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that's all there was. Yeah. And uh yeah, so we, you know, we made some we made some RPG maker games together and, you know, I got I got pretty good at using that sort of system and mm-hmm. I don't know, I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, you know, fast forward, you know, I went to university and I was like, "Hey, I'm going to do a music degree, you know, why not?" And so uh I did. And then I came out of that and I didn't know anything about like audio tech stuff. Yeah. And so I needed to do something else to mm. to figure that out. Sort of at the end of that, like I was just really determined to work on game stuff, and you know, I I moved to Toronto, and uh, one of the first games I got to work on that was that was really meaningful was uh, was Starseed Pilgrim. Mm-hmm. You know, that was about six or seven years ago, I guess. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I just you know that game, you know, I worked with Alex on that game, and it was it took off and. I was able to do this full time. Like it's yeah. great. So that's sort of what happened, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, for those who haven't played Stark Seed Pilgrim, like what is it and what's the soundtrack like? Well, okay. So it is very minimal. I mean, I had a week to do that game. Like it was very, <laughs> you know, Alex, he was releasing this thing called Probability Zero as well, this okay. other game. Uh, and there's like a bundle and there was like four games. There was like Piratitude and, you know. Uh, so Starseed Pilgrim didn't have sound, or it had very minimal like sound. There was nothing in it, mm-hmm. and I was like, "All right, I gotta come up with something in a week." And so, um, yeah, so it's just it's like a puzzle game. It's a platformer. Mm-hmm. Um, you have different puzzles you have to figure out. There's different suits, and they have different rules. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's a platformer about like rules and planting seeds. And anyway, so all the seeds have different. Instruments and they have different notes that play in C major, and it's very basic you yeah. know, when you think about it. But well, people liked it. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The game is is really a special game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So some other games that people might know you from is uh, the Yog and uh, Cryptarch and Moon Hunters, which are a bit more recent. And um, what what did you do for Electronic Super Joy? Because I know you worked on it, but was it like a separate like? OST, like I, I didn't quite catch what what you did for that. Oh, Electronic Superjoy. Um, yeah. So most of the music was made by um, this guy Envy, mm-hmm. and so Michael Todd wanted to. He was just really interested in in his music, and he was just going to make levels around this guy's music, oh, essentially. Okay. And so that's what happened. So I just came in and like made sure that the the music was you know sounded good in the game. Uh, I did all the sound design, like all the checkpoint sounds have like these orgasm checkpoint things, and it's <laughs> ridiculous. Um, but yeah, the game was just like very over the top, you know, like techno, mm. this Envy guy's music. And uh, I did have a few tracks in there, but I, they're like low pass filtered and they're just not like oh. the menu music and stuff. Gotcha. So yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Um, and what are you working on right now? Because I think you've got a lot of projects sort of on the go right now, right? Yeah, well, I just, uh, like I was saying earlier, I, we were talking earlier, uh, I just started working on Guac, uh, Guacamelee 2. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I've been doing sound design for that. I'm having fun making the sounds for it, and it's good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think by the, uh, I think by the time that game comes out, we're probably going to have every person on the audio team on this podcast at this rate because <laughs> this is the second in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a couple of games that you're working on that aren't out yet, but uh, like Riverbond by Coco Cucumber. Um, you did the music and the sound for that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's still I think there's still a bit more sound left to do okay. on it, but uh, I have wrote all the music for it. Nice. Like it's, you know, 
It looks cool. It's it's cool. It's isometric. It's yeah. No, I I played it. I played it a bit. A couple of events in the city, and it seems like a lot of fun. But they didn't have the sound on, unfortunately. So well, that's okay. I mean, that's what ha- that's what happens <laughs> at those events. But yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Martin and Vanessa are great, and they're 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 working on it. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And um, you're also working on uh, Witchwood by Alien Trap. Yeah, and Gunhead by Alien Trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do all. I do all of Lee's. Lee's games, Alien Trap stuff. Now he used to work with uh, Eduardo, which he's a really great guy from Austin. He's, oh, okay. Um, uh, he did like Gorgoa and oh, cool. You know all these other games. Yeah. Uh, I think he did everything as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really yeah, cool yeah. guy. Uh, he used to do all the sound for Lee, but you know when you have a Canadian guy that lives like he literally lives next door to me he lives like in the <laughs> the next door building so it's too convenient yeah so so yeah i've been <clears throat> i've done a few things for gunhead so far they're they're working on bosses right now so mm-hmm. it's like there's a lot of boss fights i guess yeah i've been seeing all the twitter all the twitter videos of that are you working on the music for that one with uh, ryan henwood yeah again? cool yeah, yeah and we actually um i went to japan recently in october oh. Cool, and I met up with uh, this guy Roger. I don't know if he still does or he was. He was a session session drummer for uh, for uh, Steven Universe. Oh, cool. Yeah, and uh, so he's a really awesome guy, really awesome percussionist. And uh, so Ryan and I have actually recorded a few tracks for Gunhead, and we've sent it to him, That's and awesome. he might actually do some. That's some, super cool. Some drums for us. So, wow, yeah. wow. So I, I'm. I'm sure you can't talk about Gunhead too much, but is it just sort of an evolution on the Cryptarch sound, like sort of that really heavy industrial style? Yeah, yeah. It's mostly that with, we're doing a little bit more of a like dynamic, I'm trying to implement this sort of dynamic system this time, cool. so it's less just, hey, just play this track, and uh, more like, you know, when you have low health, it's going to have this extra thing that comes in, and we're yeah. kind of composing it in that way. But it's a very similar very similar vibe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's always it's always fun when uh, composers get to start to figure out those dynamic systems. Like I don't, I haven't met a game composer who doesn't like jumping into just adding dynamic systems. Just like give me opportunities to be able to put these in, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember talking to. We were talking about Rich earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was talking to him one time. I'm sure he doesn't remember, but but I was talking to him one time. Rich is disaster piece for our listeners. This is before he did Mini Metro. Oh, okay. And so he was really because I was all about dynamics. Like I'd just mm-hmm. done Starcy Pilgrim and I'd done like uh Soka Bond and you know, mm-hmm. these other games that really <clears throat> rely heavily on like interesting musical, you know, mechanics and stuff like that. And yeah. he was just really like, No, 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 that's not how that's not how <laughs> Soundtracks should be, and he's he's he was all like, you know, when we had like an hour discussion about it, you know, and then a year or two later, like Mini Metro comes out, <laughs> and it's like literally all that, all that stuff. So, That's so funny. Yeah, how quickly he turns around. Well, it's because he finally got to do it, probably. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think so. I mean, you know, I'm definitely on the on board with the fact that, like, hey, you're making a video game. It's interactive. It's dynamic. You're able to interact with stuff. You're able to, you know, have different game states. Why aren't you taking advantage of that? Like, yeah. that's part of it. You know, listening to the soundtrack outside of the game is cool to, you know, get, you know, get a vibe back and like, you know, put yourself back into that space. But also, like, if you're playing something, it's got to be engaging. Like, I don't know. That's that's just my, I don't know. I really like to put dynamic stuff in in games whenever I can. So Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you there. Um you bring up a good point though about listening to the soundtrack after. Have you taken sort of a dynamic soundtrack and then made a listenable soundtrack like like official soundtrack on Bandcamp or whatever afterwards and have you done that yet? Uh, yeah, with many like you know, Soka mm-hmm. Bond, uh, Good Snowman is hard to build, uh the beginner's guide even like you know it was it was dynamic in the in the game and you know yeah. I just Took like different levels and kind of like piece stuff together the way I thought it would sound good and yeah. I, I'm sure it's different for every game, but what's your thought process for putting that together based on a dynamic soundtrack? Is it sort of to give a feel of of playing the game when people are listening to the soundtrack, like to remind them of all these interactive dynamic elements and sort of recreate 
their experience in a way, kind of like a nostalgic uh, recreation? Or is it more of you just getting to go wild and make your own new tracks based on all of these elements you had in the game? Well, yeah, there's there's a certain level of like, hey, this is fun. You know, like I'm making this music from stuff like stems that I've already, you know, done, mm-hmm. you know, essentially. I think that's really fun. But but also, yeah, the I think the music for when people come back to it and they want to listen to it, it does put them back into that headspace mm-hmm. and where they were at. Like, you know, that kind of works for any game. Like, you know, listening to a soundtrack outside of a outside of a video game with no context and then, mm-hmm. you know, versus listening to a soundtrack, you know, that you've played this game and you know these areas and you know what emotions are happening or whatever. Mm-hmm. It changes the music like for the listener for sure. Like, yeah. you know. Well, I think I think that could actually transition really nicely into a uh, let's just go straight to your favorite game music because for me, sure. Uh, um, it works out well because for me, I have not played uh, Legend of Mana, and I played Metroid Prime, yeah, Metroid Prime One, but I barely remember it. Mm-hmm. So when I was listening to those soundtracks uh, before you got here, um, to me, you know, Legend of Mana, I'm thinking, yeah, this this sounds like a 16-bit era brand RPG. Yeah, that's yeah, nice. And yeah, Metroid Prime yeah. I was like, oh yeah, this sounds like atmospheric sort of spacey music but obviously to you they sort of all those emotions and and feeling and atmospheres embedded cuz so so legend of mana like what speaks to you about that soundtrack the composer yoko shimamura so yeah yoko has done many different soundtracks i think she's worked on like kingdom hearts and she's done all kinds of other games mm. in the future okay but i think legend of mana I don't know. Like it just it really I don't know whether it's nostalgia or it's just like incredibly well composed, like, you know, that sort of era of mm-hmm. video game music. I don't know. Like I just I'm really into her style and yeah. you know, I think it's I think that's for me personally, I think that's the best game that she's done that really kind of like you know, it's obvious that she really cared about it. You know, oh, she yeah. made it. I don't like I don't I don't know what to say other than it's just <laughs> like it's a really beautiful soundtrack. Yeah, no, the soundtrack is beautiful for sure. Well, you did you play it like when it first came out? Like was it one of your like games from the time or did you play it afterwards? I played it pretty much when it came out, but okay. I mean honestly, I didn't even like the gameplay was not even that. Like the game isn't the best. It look it looks very beautiful. Like yeah. it's a very you know stylized you know watercolor sort mm. of. You know it's very nice. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's just the, I don't know. The music really just it just really spoke to me. I don't know. Yeah, I remember it a lot. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, that's good to hear. And for uh, Metroid Prime, is it just the trilogy in general? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I just really like Metroid, <laughs> and it and it, it there is a lot of like nostalgic stuff from like the earlier Metroid games, like uh, uh, you know Super Metroid and mm. you know stuff like that, where they've you know done remixes. And I think it's the same composer. I can't remember his name either, but okay. yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same composer that uh, that did all the Metroid games. Oh, that's cool. That he you know he you know in the future they're just like yeah we'll get the same guy and yeah. So it's it's got that. It's got that vibe. It's not really dynamic in any way. I know we were talking about that, but like, yeah. it's not really, they, they don't really do any of that stuff. It's just like straight cool music. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it is cool music. I mean, the, the, what's the name of the winter level Fen, Fendrara? Fendrana. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fendrana yeah. drifts. Yeah. It's really that's good. sort of the one that people are always uh, tossing my way. I think it's kind of the, the fan favorite in general. You know, now that I think about it, I think there are two layers to that track. Yeah, based on when you when you first arrive versus when you kill the first boss or something. Yeah, when I was looking at the soundtrack, it had like sort of two different versions, I guess, of a, of a lot of the tracks. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't listen to it in depth to see sort of what the difference was, but that might be a case. But that's not, still not really dynamic music. It's just a different loop based on sort of a thing that would have happened in the game, right? Yeah, but it's still like, you know, building on. I think in that game specifically it's the same for Fendrana. I think it's and I could be wrong about this, but I I remember it specifically being like, "Hey, there's this track that's playing when you first get there and it's kind of moody and there's not much going on, mm-hmm. but like there's an it's just another stem that goes on top of that. Oh, okay. That's more like, you know, has more rhythmic elements and stuff like that." Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Let's let's move uh Let's move back to your work because um, you mentioned, yeah, you've worked, you you did the music for the beginner's guide, which is 
probably the biggest game that you've that you've worked on. Am I wrong in saying that? No, I mean I, mean, I don't know what's to say. What's <laughs> big? What's big? What's a big game? I don't know. Well, I think I think that I think that Davy is probably like he's he's quite an influential uh, creator. I think. Um, yeah, Davy's a good. He's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um so for the beginner's guide, I guess I recently um played through it and cool. The whole idea of yeah, I was it's I'm glad I'm glad that we were recording this cuz it finally got me around to playing it because I've been putting off cuz I love Stanley Parable. Like I absolutely love that game. Yeah. But uh and beginner's guide was also very very good. But the idea of composing um music for a meta narrative like that, right? Mm-hmm. Because um, I guess the first question is like, how involved were you in composing through the development process? Like, were you brought on towards the end, or were you part of sort of Davy's whole like vision, like development process of that game? So, so I met Davy. I don't know a long time ago. Okay, and he came to. What happened is he came to Toronto and he was helping Robin. Show off a game that he was making called uh, Sound Self. I think it's Sound okay. Self. Okay. And uh, that was at what's the what's the thing in Toronto? It used to be uh, Gamer Camp. Oh, it was at Gamer Camp. I don't even remember that. Yeah, yeah. This was like <laughs> several years. It was like they stopped doing it like three years ago or oh, something. Okay. Uh, anyway, so you know, Davy had just like Stanley had just came out like a week before that, and so wow. he came and he stayed with us. Um, I was living with Damien. We did the yog mm. um, at the time, and uh, he stayed with us. And you know, he showed me this thing that he had, and it was, you know, the early versions of the beginner's guide. Yeah, and it was just several levels, and you know, I was like, this is really cool. Like, mm-hmm. this is real. I see what you're trying to go for here, and yeah. So I was, I was pretty much with you know Davey from from the outset. That's cool. And uh, you know, watching that game, you know, the game is a very special game for me. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's a very uh, just for a lot of reasons. Like, you know, it's it was something that I went through uh, you know, I I got to experience I don't I don't even know how to say it. Like, I got to I got to I got to and and now Davey and I are very good friends and like yeah. we we you know, we get to hang out and it's it's really nice to to make a make a friend in that, yeah. that way, yeah, yeah. Well, the game the game itself is such like a like a personal experience, yeah. really. Like I know I know Davy said that the game's meaning is up for interpretation, but mm-hmm. really it is like by the end of that game, you feel like you've connected with something, with some sort of idea or a person or anything. And I think most players probably feel the same way. I guess I guess the question is, since you were involved uh, from the beginning, when you were composing this, because I think I mean okay. Spoilers for the beginner's guide, everyone. Um, when you were sort of composing the music for uh, Coda's games, um, going through, it's not that it's not that uh, you're trying to trick the player into thinking that you know all of Coda's games is real because it's up to interpretation of whether Coda is real or not. When you were composing those tracks. Did you take any measures to try and make those games feel really authentic as like the beginning games of a game developer, or did you just score each scene as the way that it needed to be? Well, that's a good question. One of the things that I did um, that was actually one of the things that Davy and I talked about initially uh, with the first level, like um, the Whisper Machine. That's yeah. the one where you're in, like space. That's the space station one, yeah. Yeah, and I, I originally made music that was very, like, sounded like Halo, basically, right? Okay. You know, it was just like Halo, whatever. Yeah. And, and we both decided that it would be better for that music to be not as, like, still kind of have that same vibe, but be like. Shittier, okay, <laughs> <laughs> right, and so yeah. and so, yeah. I changed all the instrumentation to like use the, you know, default Pro Tools like expand, you know, instrumentation, and it was just like really, you know, I took it down to I took all the reverb off everything, and it was just like, <laughs> you know, it became what it is, and yeah. so so yeah, we d- we did think about we did think about that, like whether or not this should be something that, you know, I don't I don't want to talk maybe too much about. About that, That's but fair. but but uh, but yeah, that was definitely a thing that 
that we thought about. What's really interesting is you know watching people on YouTube or watching people play it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes Davy and I'll sit down and well, I mean, we did when the game came out. We sat down, and we watched um, uh, you know people on Twitch or whatever play it, and we would only we would only watch the last the last like Coda's letter, yeah, um, and then. And then the, the the final, like the end, the end. And usually, what happened is after, like we, I don't know. It's really nice to see those people's, you know, people's reactions. And then at the at the very end, it's really interesting to like uh, to see how people react. Like they and and most of the time, was really beautiful is that people say uh, they only talk about. Uh, themselves, like their feelings, like they're not mm-hmm. talking about the game. They're not talking about all. They're just like, oh, you know. And I felt this way about this, and I felt that way about you know this thing that happened in my life. And I'm, you know, that's it's really like cool that beyond the the game itself, that people can, um, you know, kind of look look inward and and you know talk about you know how they feel about stuff it's yeah, really cool yeah and especially for like anyone who's a creator i mean the game just speaks about creative difficulties like and it speaks about them so well that i think anyone including you know twitch streamers and youtubers who have created something i think anyone could connect to that at a level but yeah, um yeah yeah so. you've worked on a lot of indie games and and how much ryan goes from from soundtrack to soundtrack i know that sounds like a weird question but do you sort of bring something of yourself? Like, what would you say your style is when you're doing video game soundtracks? Mm, so, yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, <laughs> I've done all kinds of different stuff, right? So. Yeah. Well, that's why I asked because when I was going through sort of your discography, like the genres are just like you seem to be able to hit everything. And so, what what do you bring from game to game? I think that it's important to to know like for instance the yog or you know which is acoustic music mm-hmm. uh, acoustic guitar stuff and you know stuff like cryptark i don't just like it's not just me mm-hmm. that's doing it i have a lot of you know i have people that that i've worked with that are that are helping me i can't mm. i can't do everything you know yeah and so, you know, working with Ryan Henwood and stuff like that, like, you know, he's pretty good at guitar and, you know, he brings his guitar over and we jam and, and I put some synth in it and, it, you know, it, it works out. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, we're in this key and, you know, he plays it and, you know, it's, there are a lot of collaborations and I think that's, that's why I don't think I could do everything myself. But, but if, if I had to make something like, you know, the beginner's guide, like something that would be very like ambient, something mm-hmm. that would have piano in it, you know, I have a piano degree. Yeah, that kind of music, I guess, is probably my my forte. Uh, also, mm-hmm. you know, some sort of like weird electronic music probably <laughs> is that that makes a lot of sense. So, so for Moon Hunters, then, because when I was listening to Moon Hunters, um, I was thinking because this is sort of the big. I you worked on that with uh, Helena Huron, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Heron, and yeah. Heron. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's all right. And that was sort of um, the big like epic adventure but still very like grounded and personal um felt like maybe you were taking some of the like legend of mana inspiration from there definitely it's yeah. cool that you said that because uh yeah there was definitely one track like the the final boss track that I kind of like there's an ostinato in legend of mana that I was like uh, I like that, and it goes, nice. you know, like, dun, 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 dun. and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna, I gotta use something like that," and I, and I did, and it's a totally different track, but you know, did you use the same ostinato though? Uh, similar, yeah. <laughs> it's very similar, yeah. Do you like taking like sort of ideas and inspirations and and quoting them in your music? Do you do that a lot? Uh, Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it depends. If like, yeah, if yeah. I'm inspired by something like the with the good snowman is hard to build. Mm. The uh, menu music, like when you hit escape or you hit menu on your phone or whatever, mm. like the music that plays in that is. There's a similar harmonic thing that uh, that I did. That's it's similar to a Boards of Canada track that I really like. Oh, okay. So I mean, yeah, I don't know. I look at stuff and I hear stuff, and I think everybody does that. You it, know? Yeah, yeah. That, that's why I ask because it's a common thing that I'm I'm learning as I'm as I'm speaking to everyone on this podcast. Everyone sort of likes grabbing things and putting them into their soundtracks. So yeah, 
Yeah, yeah no, that's fun. I guess before we wrap up, um, let's just quickly talk about some of the games you've been playing recently. And I think at the top of that list was Celeste. Yeah, yeah, I just finished Celeste the other day. Yeah. Here, people are really digging Celeste. It's fantastic. It's a really, really special game. Yeah, because I haven't, I haven't played it because platformers aren't really my thing. Because, mm-hmm. like, what does it do that that pushes it beyond just being like a really good platformer? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think. I mean, personally, for me, I think the narrative is very personal. Like okay. one of those, like there's a there's an obvious like personal level to it. But other than that, I mean, it's just a very well, you know, everything is masterfully designed. Like it's very tight. Like how how is it any different from like Super Meat Boy or something? Yeah, as, as you would say, like you know, I've I've heard people ask that question, and I'm like, I think it's mostly the narrative. Like and the yeah. and the music. The music is also very, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Kevin like Power Up Audio like. Kevin just, uh, I I messaged him the other day. And I was like, man, you. I just finished it. I didn't want to message him until I finished it. And yeah. I was like, you destroyed it. Like it's amazing. Like the sound in that game is just phenomenal. Like all the tiny details are just, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. No, I was listening to some of the music and it sounds just super, super fantastic. Like, but well, there's a lot of dynamic stuff. Oh, as is well. There? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, cool. You move into different areas. Like different stems come in, and it's just. It's masterfully done. Ah. Like it's very, very, very good. Cool. Okay, so I actually have to go like look at it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's worth it's worth checking. You can play like there's a there's a like an assist mode that like mm. if you're just like ah, I don't like platformers that much, it'll it'll help you get through it. Yeah, yeah. No platformers are because uh, like I played Super Meat Boy back in the day, but that was I feel like back when I had more patience for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? What else have you been playing? Fallout 4 VR? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been playing I've played that for like 20 hours of Fallout 4 VR. Wow. It's probably like three or four times a week now. Like I'll just I'll be finished working and you know, I turn off my lights and I turn on my VR. So it's it's like a whole thing because I gotta put like contacts in. It's like a I don't know, VR I like it a lot, but it's like I don't know. As someone with glasses, yeah. you understand that it's like, yeah. Well, I've actually never, I've never done VR. Oh, really? Ever? No, I've got wow. a couple of, I've got a couple of tickets to uh, one of the VR like arcades downtown, so I'm gonna check it out. But yeah, because it always felt like it, it's an ordeal to sort of get set up. But I guess if you're gonna spend a couple of hours in it, like. It sounds like you've been really, really yeah, digging it, right? Yeah, I'm really into it. I don't know if you ever played Fallout, but I, I haven't played four. Um, I played a ton of New Vegas and quite a bit of three as well. All right, you're one of those. I'm one of those. <laughs> yeah. No, I actually, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I saw, I saw what Fallout Four had to offer, and I was like, I'll just play New Vegas mm-hmm. again. Now. <laughs> no, Fallout Four, it's really good in VR. It's just, I think it's the best VR thing I've ever played. Like, it's just mm. really. After the first half an hour, like the first, like, uh, oh, you know, you got to figure out and you're in the vault and all that stuff. Like, after you get through that and it's like, here's a gun, here's the world, like that in VR, you know, you can look around and you can see the sky and yeah. you can see, you know, different things. And you, you walk into a subway station and there's like these ghouls coming after you and, you know, you got a duck behind stuff. Like, it's just, you know, you do that for two hours and you come out and you're like, you know, it's just it's wonderful. It's really, really good. So yeah, I'm probably gonna go home and play after. That. <laughs> <laughs> Literal immersion. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. really good. Cool, great. All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thanks so much for coming out and chatting with me, Ryan. Hey, no worries. Uh, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, probably just my website, dualryan.com. Uh, you can look me up on Spotify if you want to hear some stuff that I did. I guess Ryan Roth. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And and on Bandcamp, Dual Ryan. Well, not everything is on the Dual Ryan Bandcamp, but all of your soundtracks are on Bandcamp in some account or another, I think. Uh yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for everyone for listening to the Game Music Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Game Music Pod, and you can find us at GameMusicPodcast.com, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, and all the other podcast places. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe if you want to hear more every two weeks and throw us a review on iTunes if you enjoy the show. Uh, Tanino says if you're looking for significant insight on great works of game music, look no further, unless you're looking for Jake's YouTube page as well. Thank you for that, Tanino. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, thanks again, Ryan. Hey, no worries. Thank you.